Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening, welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Lipak Shikurana. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you. Three Lashkar terrorists neutralized in encounter in India's Jammu and Kashmir. Pakistan forces take control of anti-terrorism center seized by militants. And poverty weakens ability of Afghans to pull through chilly winter. Now for all the details, three terrorists belonging to Pakistan-based lashkar e taiba outfit were neutralized by security forces in an encounter in Shopian district of India's Jammu and Kashmir on Tuesday. A senior police official said two of them were involved in killing of a Kashmiri Pandit and a Nepali immigrant laborer earlier this year. Indian security forces on Tuesday neutralized three terrorists belonging to Pakistan-based Lashkar-e-Taibar outfit in Shopian district of India's Jammu and Kashmir territory. The encounter broke out in Munj Marg of Shopian during the VRs after a joint team of police and the Indian Army launched a cordon and search operation in the area over specific inputs. A senior police official said two of the slain terrorists, Latif Lone and Umar Nazir, were involved in the killing of Kashmiri Pandit, Puran Krishna Bhatt and Nepali immigrant Til Bahadur Thapa earlier this year. All three were local recruits of the terror outfit belonging to different districts of South Kashmir. Sopian police got information, so the Sopian police got the army, got the search, in which three terrorists were killed. The Ujjir Nadir, who is a Laskar Tewa, was the Delgaan Anantna district. And the other one, Latif Lon, was the Sopian district. आप लोग को जैसा पता है कि हम लोग पहले ट्वीट भी किए थे इस परिवार भी घोषित किए थे वही टेररिस्ट है दोनों मारा गया उसके साथ एक और नया लड़का ज्वाइन किया था पिछले महीने डॉन टॉन बारामूला को भी मारा गया है द ऑफिशियल फर्दर एडेड दैट ऑल एक्सेप्ट वन टेररिस्ट इन प्रीवियस केसेस ऑफ टारगेटेड सिविलियन किलिंग्स हैव आइदर बीन न्यूट्रलाइज्ड और अप्रिहेंडेड बाय पुलिस इंडिया हैज लॉन्ग ब्लेम टेररिस्ट्स आर एडेड बाय पाकिस्तान टू स्प्रेड अनरेस्ट इन द कश्मीर वैली इस्लामाबाद हाउएवर डिनाइज द एलिगेशंस and parts of northern India on Tuesday witnessed a thick blanket of smog as low wintry temperatures set in. The drop in mercury has also kept Delhi's air quality index in very poor category, raising fears for the health of millions of people. Northern parts of India on Tuesday witnessed a thick blanket of toxic smog as winter sets in the region. This has led to reduce in visibility and inconvenience to commuters and pedestrians alike. The national capital New Delhi remained engulfed in a layer of toxic haze which has made iconic monuments in the city like India Gate barely visible. As per the data from the government agency, System of Air Quality and Weather Forecasting and Research, the quantities of particulate matter in Delhi were recorded at 299 for PM10 and 196 for PM2.5. और आप देख सकते हैं विजिबिलिटी कितनी कितनी कम हो गई है ये इंडिया गेट भी यहाँ से साफ साफ आप नहीं देख पा रहे हैं। Though the air quality index of the northern Lucknow and Kanpur cities did not climb as high as the Indian capital, where the AQI hovered at the very poor category, residents still said the dust and smoke reduced visibility to a greater extent. In past, several measures such as occasional suspension of construction activities and restrictions on diesel vehicles have been implemented to improve the city's air quality. But experts have said that these measures need to be applied across northern India, which also suffers from poor air quality, to effectively control pollution. 
In news from Pakistan, Pakistani security forces on Tuesday retook a counter-terrorism interrogation center in the northwestern town of Banu two days after it was seized by Islamist militants. Reports suggested all hostages, some slightly wounded, had been rescued. Pakistani security forces retook a counter-terrorism interrogation center in the northwestern town of Banu on Tuesday, two days after it was seized by the tehreek e taliban Pakistan, with reports suggesting that all hostages, some slightly wounded, had been rescued. The TTP, or Pakistani Taliban, as it known, is loosely allied with the Afghan Taliban. Its fighters have snatched weapons of interrogators and took them captive on Sunday. The group has stepped up attacks since it announced the end of an Afghan Taliban brokered ceasefire with the government last month. Earlier on Monday, Pakistan's former Prime Minister and opposition PTI party chairman Imran Khan lashed out at PM Shahbaz Sharif's government for a rise in terrorism and over its failure to deal with recent cross-border attacks by security forces of a friendly Afghan interim government. Pakistan's military has conducted several offensives in the tribal areas since 2009, which forced the militants and their leadership to flee to neighboring Afghan districts. Islamabad says there they set up training centers to plan and launch attacks inside Pakistan, a charge Kabul denies. Modern news from Pakistan. The opposition parties in Pakistan's Punjab province assembly have moved a no-trust motion against Chief Minister Chaudhry Parvez Ilahi. The move came days ahead of the proposed dissolution of the assembly by Ilahi's PMLQ and its ally PTI party. The opposition in Punjab province of Pakistan on Monday moved a no-trust motion against Chief Minister Chaudhry Parvez Ilahi. The move came after PTI Chairman Imran Khan declared Punjab Assembly will be dissolved on December 23. Ilahi's PMLQ is an ally of PTI. The submission made to Assembly Secretariat states that members of the PPP and the PMLN have lost confidence in CM Parvez Ilahi's ability to lead the House as per constitution, local media reported. Separately, a no trust motion has also been submitted against Assembly Speaker and Deputy Speaker by the opposition, following which Governor of Punjab, Bali Gur Rahman, has convened the meeting of Assembly on December 21 for CM Ilahi to obtain a vote of confidence. Reacting to the development, PTI leaders have termed the Governor's decision as malicious, adding his move is tantamount to breaking the oath. PTI senior leader and Imran Khan's close aide, Fawad Chaudhry, in a tweet said, the no-trust motion against Ilahi is a move to run away from election. The assembly will dissolve. People decision is final, he added. The opposition coalition is mulling options to prevent the dissolution of assembly. If no-trust motion fails and Ilahi proceeds with dissolution, the law mandates a fresh election within 90 days. In news from Nepal, CPN Unified Socialist leader Madhav Kumar Nepal on Monday assured partners of the ruling alliance that he was not looking for an alternative coalition as he assured of his party's support to form a new government. The president has given one week's time to political parties for government formation and to stake claim for the prime minister's post. CPN Unified Socialist leader Madhav Kumar Nepal on Monday assured partners of the ruling alliance that he was not looking for alternative coalition as he assured of his party's support to form a new government. He however warned major parties of the five-party coalition not to be arrogant while sharing key posts in an apparent indication to CPN Mao's centre which is believed to be in talks with opposition UML party to put the Nepali Congress under pressure while negotiating key posts. He said talks of forming a democratic alliance or left alliance were bereft of reality. This comes as President Bidya Devi Bhandari has given political parties until December 25 to stake claim for Prime Minister's post and form a new government. The parliament is scheduled to hold first session post the elections on Thursday which will see oath-taking ceremony of newly elected representatives. The ruling alliance led by PM Sher Bahadur Deoba's Nepali Congress secured 136 seats in the election, two less than the required majority in the 275-member parliament. The main opposition CPN UML and its allies won 92 seats. Both need the support of smaller groups to stake claim. 
Well, millions of Afghans are suffering from extreme poverty, unable to afford wood or coal to keep themselves warm amid chilly winters. While the ongoing economic crisis has led to acute food insecurity since the Taliban seized power last August. A report. 50-year-old Mohammad Nasir believes that living in Afghanistan virtually is not life. Like thousands of the poor living in the Taimani temporary refugee camp in Kabul, Nasir and his 15 family members are forced to burn garbage to keep themselves warm in the chilly winter, as poverty has weakened their ability to buy wood or coal. Aid agencies have said more than 24 million out of Afghanistan's 35 million population is facing acute food insecurity amid a high rate of unemployment since the Taliban seized power last August following the withdrawal of the US-led coalition forces. A ton of coal, which was around 6,000 Afghani last year, now costs 16,000 Afghani, while the price of one kirwar, or 560 kilograms of wood, which was 4,000 to 5,000 Afghanis last year, now costs 6 to 7,000 Afghanis. No country has so far recognized the Taliban's regime in Afghanistan. The country's assets have remained frozen due to sanctions that have severely hampered banking, business and development, leading to greater insecurity, poverty and isolation. The craft safari tours being conducted by authorities in India's Jammu and Kashmir have helped promote and revive the handicraft sector in the region. As part of the initiative, officials along with civil society members visit workshops of artisans and witness their daily craft work and get to directly interact with them. Take a look. The Craft Safari Tour series, which was started by the administration in India's Jammu and Kashmir last year to revive the handicraft sector, is kicking and thriving with full progress. As part of the tours, officials of the Handicrafts and Handloom Department, along with civil society members, visit workshops of artisans who show them their daily craft work like carpet weaving, wood carving, copper work, paper mash and embroidery. The unique and amazing handworks of artisans are famous across the globe and have a good international market. हम पिछले सारे क्राफ्ट सफारीज में आए हैं और बहुत फायदा हुआ है हमें ये जानने के लिए कि हमारे जो अपने हुनर हैं हमारे जो अपने क्राफ्ट्समैन हैं हमारे आर्टिजन हैं यहाँ पर जिनका हुनर पूरी दुनिया में मशहूर है वो सारा प्रोसेस क्या है वो कहाँ से आते हैं ये कैसे बनता है और उनकी जिंदगी में क्या प्रॉब्लम्स हैं कि ऐसे जो है कारखाने प्रमोट हो ऐसे आर्टिजन जो हमारे इस टाइम हम नेशनल अवार्डी के कारखाने में हैं तो ऐसे आर्टिजन को प्रमोट करना बहुत जरूरी the Kashmir Valley is considered to be a treasure trove of arts and crafts. Recently, Srinagar, the summer capital of Jammu and Kashmir, also made entry to UNESCO's network of creative cities. Well, that's the way it was in South Asia this evening. Before we conclude, the top stories once again. Three Lashkar terrorists neutralized in encounter in India's Jammu and Kashmir. Pakistan forces take control of anti-terrorism center seized by militants. And poverty weakens ability of Afghans to pull through chilly winter. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash SAsianewsline and follow us on Twitter at SAsianewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We'll see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.